What's going on everybody? It's Professor Gnome and today we're going to be taking a look at Terra Pagos EX and this card is really good. Maybe this deck is the best deck in the game right now. There's a lot of contention around that but I think that it's safe to say that it is easily the best deck out of this new like set. One of the things that it's able to do is use the unified beatdown attack so it does 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon. And that really matters because of the fact that it combos with a card it was pretty much made and designed with, which is the uh, Area Zero Underdeath, where what it does is it allows you to expand your bench space. It functions like Skyfield, where you can have eight cards on your bench rather than just the five. And that's really, really good. One of the other things is we can also utilize its Crown Opal attack for 180 damage, where during your next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic non-colorless Pokemon, which means in a lot of matchups, you can just kind of become invulnerable, and that's really nice as well in Maridon matchups and a lot of other things, you are able to kind of just completely nullify the matchup. Even things like Iron Thorns and things like that can be really good for you. So that's going to be the main card of the focus, but one of the other things that you get to do is this deck really focuses around normal type Pokemon. So we're going to use the new Buffalant, which has the Curly Wall attack, or ability rather, where as long as you have one other Buffalant in play, all your basic colorless Pokemon take 60 less damage from attacks. This is really good because your Terra Pagos is very strong, but it has a low HP total, so taking 60 damage off attacks makes it so you'll probably get like two shot rather than one shot and in some instances three shot rather than two one of the other things is that we get to run the fan rotom which is really good it's another one of the new cards where it has the ability fan call where during your first turn you can search your deck for up to three colorless pokemon with 100 or hp or less reveal them put them into your hand and then shuffle your deck this is really huge because of the fact that you're able to search out your buffalons if you need them but also what it lets you search out is your Hoot Hoot and your Noctowl. There is a Hoot Hoot with 70 HP, but right now I'm not running into Dracopult enough that I really feel a need to run it more than this one. And I just like the Stand Sentry uh, ability that this Hoot Hoot provides, where basic energy attached to your bench Pokemon cannot be discarded by the effects of your opponent's items or supporter cards. This isn't dramatically important, but it does come up every now and again against control matchups and things like that where they're trying to like knock off your item or you know, they're trying to knock off your energy, things like Crushing Hammer, stuff like that. It can just, it, when it comes up, it's nice. When it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Um, but the more importantly, you're able to run Noctowl with the Jewel Seeker ability. And this card is kind of busted where during your turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, if you have any Terra Pokemon in play, which you will because you have Terra Pagos, you can search your deck for up to two trainer cards, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. That's super huge. Being able to search out any two trainer cards you need is incredibly powerful, so it can get us things like a research if we need it, as well as any other item cards. It can get us our, Ch our Crispin. So it can just get us a ton of different stuff, and it's really, really powerful. As other backup cards that we have in this deck, we run a Manaphy just to help protect our bench a little bit. We run the Radiant Greninja since it's just really powerful. Same thing with Pheasantipity. It's just such a good card that there's no reason not to run it. And we also have the Blood Moon Ursa Luna as well. It's like a backup attacker later on in the game since it also is very powerful. We also run one Bravery Charm. This is just to help our Terra Pagos again in situations where we get two Buffalons on the field. And then we have our Bravery Charm. We're pretty much never going to get one shot by anything, which is really nice. And then one of the other things is that we do play the Blair. Um, Blair is really, really strong. One of the things that it allows you to do is that if your opponent has two prize cards remaining on your next knockout, you take an additional prize card. This can be really nice. Let's say our opponent is in a situation where we have it's three prize cards to two and we get a knockout we won't go down to one we can just get our second prize and kind of go from the, or our third prize and kind of win the game right there we also run co one copy of toros this is again to pick up our terra pagos if we need to but also it allows us to reset our noctal if that's something we want to do later on in the game but yeah that's kind of the list guys be sure to let me know 
what you think of the list and any changes that you would make there's a ton of ways to run this card so i'm very curious to see you guys favorite i know that a lot of people are also running this alongside palkia and i do think that's pretty strong um but i just want to do like the more you know colorless variety since i don't get to play a lot of colorless cards like this all the time and i think that's really cool so yeah be sure to let me know what you think of the list be sure to like comment subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the following videos and what cards you want to see featured next as well as i want to give a shout out to the channel members so definitely thank you guys so much for that added level of support i do really appreciate it um and i don't want that to be you know undervalued or undersold so yeah thank you guys so much for that if you are interested there's a link to our community discord in the description down below as well as the deck list for this video will also be in the description if you want to try it out for yourself but that's enough rambling i will see you guys all in game number one in a moment peace all right, we're into game number one, and our opponent's going to be going first. We are going to mulligan this hand away. Going first is obviously much more optimal for this deck because of the fact that you can't use your, uh, like, beatdown attack, which is obviously a little sad on your first turn. If you could, though, it would be absurdly broken, so it makes sense why you can't. But... It's not too bad overall. We see Brute Bonnet from our opponent. Oh, no way. It's the, um, it's like the first turn kind of like Donk deck. Wait, why are they playing Charm? Is that not what the deck is? Oh, that's not what this deck is. Because it wouldn't be playing any energy if it was. So, we'll play down Greninja. We'll go for this and this. We'll fan call. Grab ourselves another Buffalon. The question is, do we want to go research I think it's fine we'll go we won't go research this turn we'll get rid of that we'll concealed cards For the grass energy, we get ourselves an Ultra Ball. That's actually not too bad for us because we can get rid of this. And we'll get rid of the other Ultra Ball for now. Grab ourselves the Terrapagos. We'll slap that down. And then we'll use our supporter for the turn to power up our Terrapagos. For future turns since I'm pretty sure I can just use uh, I'm not positive what our matchup is yet but I have a strong feeling that I'm going to be able to just crown opal the like this whole game away there's Niono that's totally fine for us obviously we lose out on our Noctowl but you know it gives us plenty of other options we actually get ourselves the Professor Toros, we get ourselves the Underdepth, and we get ourselves the another Terrapagos. So all of that working out for us pretty well. It looks like they have, like, it looks like they were trying to play the Dunk deck, but they're just playing like a very different version. I mean, if they have another energy, they can go Poison Chain here. They get a lot of damage off that, which is good for them, but it looks like they're playing... Ooh, cool. I mean, that Iona worked out great for us. So, we'll pick up the Buffalant. We can bring in our Terrapagos. We'll drop the Zero Underdeath. Drop that. Drop another Terrapagos. We can drop the Noctowl as well. 
we can use the Noctowl to grab ourselves a glass trumpet and we'll grab we already have a research right yeah we can even grab ourselves an earthen vessel because we have the water and grass energy in the discard pile so we'll go one here and we'll throw one on the fan rotom use it as like a free retreater we'll go earthen vessel I thought I had grass energy in my discard pile. Or sorry, I thought I had water energy in my deck still. I don't, so we're gonna go concealed cards. We'll nest ball out one more hoot hoot for later. And from here, we'll just go United Beatdown. That was my misplay. What I wanted to do was get another water energy onto the onto the Terrapagos in the active so that way I could just crown opal and go from there not that I really like need it but it's kind of the play I wanted to make but unfortunately that just didn't really work out for me on this turn we have to get rid of two of our Pokemon we can get rid of the fan Rotom and we'll get rid of the Greninja But, I mean, this is still fine for us. It's kind of the same outcome regardless. What we can do is go Ultra Ball for our... Yeah, we'll go Ultra Ball, whatever we draw, and the Lost Vacuum. Grab ourselves a our Noctowl all over again. And kind of go from there. Mm. I kind of like having the double colorless just set up. I think I'm just going to play that down. I'm going to go under depth. I'll lost vacuum away the ancient booster capsule. And then I'll drop the professor's research. From here, I think we go Nest Ball, grab ourselves an extra Terrapagos for later, we can go Glass Trumpet, or Electric Grass, and then I'm going to go Prime Catcher. Pull up the subjugating chains. I don't do enough damage to knock this out. Actually, I just made a mistake. I should have played the Bufalon down, and that would have given me enough damage. So, misplay on my part. But I have the boss's orders, so it doesn't really matter. They counter okay they're gonna concede definitely a misplay on my part I should have been able to knock that out um, but looks like our opponent was just playing a really weird deck like it was kind of in the middle between two different decks so not the best thing we could have gone up against in game one but it kind of is what it is and we'll jump into game two where my play will be better for sure see you guys in game number two all right we're into game number two and we're gonna be going first we don't love opening uh, Ursa Luna here, for sure, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Our opponent is going to mulligan, so that's going to help us a little bit. We see a Grass Energy, Energy Retrievals with the Crispin. So, a couple different things that could be, so we'll kind of have to wait a second to see. We do get ourselves the Fan Rotom, though. That's pretty nice. We see Ogre Pond. Still doesn't exactly tell us what we're up against, but we can drop the Fan Rotom. Go ahead and fan call, grab ourselves Noctel, Hoot Hoot, and Buffalant. 
that way we can get the hoot hoot down we can drop the buffalon as well then we can go nest ball nest ball we'll grab ourselves the terrapagos that we can set down and then we can nest ball again to grab ourselves the other buffalon mostly this is just in case so what i want to do is i'm going to go ahead and place the double turbo down and then i can pass my turn the main reason why we place the buffalo is just in case we get like bosses ordered on our terra pagos and they do something you know kind of random or crazy or whatever because they could still be playing something like raging bolt and if they are there's a small possibility they're able to boss up the Terrapagos and knock us out if we don't have the buffalo in play so we want to make sure that that's available plus we already have switch in hand so it doesn't really matter yeah so they are playing the raging bolt which means what we want to make sure we're able to do is get ourselves a new Terrapagos on board that we can power up so we can use crown opal to kind of bypass the entire deck but for now we can just kind of get snipe damage down there's the vitality to attach one So we're in a pretty good space to not get KO'd this turn. They can manually attach an energy to the Raging Bolt and then retreat and place some damage or they can retreat out and then go Burst Roar for a new hand. We see a Squawk Billy so they'll discard their hand here. Oh they do have Switch Cart available. So if they can get themselves one more energy, then they'll actually be able... Well, they won't be able to knock out Ursa Luna, because we still have the Bofalons down. So they may give up a lot of extra energy, but or they're missing out on the Ogre Ponds, like they didn't get them. Okay, there's a Nest Ball to get out their last Ogre Pond that they'll need. They still need two grass energy available. There's another Raging Bolt. Okay, so they just go Burst Roar. I mean, that's fine with me. So, what we can do is we'll drop... We'll spin the Pokestop first really quickly. See if we get anything. We do, we don't really get the energy we would have wanted from it, at least not yet. But what we can do is drop the Noctowl, use Jewel Seeker, and from here what we'll do is we'll go Crispin, and we'll do... We want one more earthen vessel. Or do we go Ultra Ball? Let me check my hand really quick. Yeah. Alright, so this is fine. So, what I can do is I can go Crispin here. Grab a water energy and an electric energy. I can add the water to hand, bring the electric energy, attach it to Terrapagos, manually attach the water energy. Then what I can do is go earthen vessel. I'll get rid of the super rod for now. Grab myself the grass and electric energy ultra ball both of those away 
grab myself a pheasantipity for after. Actually, I'll grab myself one more Terrapagos because I can always nest ball out the other thing. So then from here, I will glass trumpet to attach the grass energy. I'll pass for now, leave the electric energy in the discard pile. I can go for the switch, bring this in, and I will crown opal, which is not enough to get a KO, but it does make me immune, so they're going to have to pivot and commit a lot of energy, so like they can go like boss's orders here to bring something up into the active if they want, but if they do that, I'm not really too worried about it, or they could even go like the Pokemon catcher which they miss, which is pretty good for me because what they could do is like Pokemon catch or something up and then boss up the Terrapagos to knock that out and that would definitely be annoying. But there's a Vitality, so they're going to have to find a way to switch this out. I like this art for Terrapagos, I think it's pretty cool. So there's the Energy Retrieval. Obviously having the double colorless attached is like a little annoying. It's like not what we would have wanted, but it's still okay. It would be a two hit KO regardless. Hopefully we can draw ourselves into our stadium soon. That'd be really nice. But again, it doesn't really matter because they have to find a way to get this Terrapagos out of the active. We just need a way to reset a new one. If this does get KO'd. So there's the Prime Catcher. They bring up Ursaluna. Which, that's fine. That's just another option down. So they're going to take two prizes here. But they're going to have to give up a lot to do that. We see two Pokemon Catcher down. Along with... The Prime Catcher. So that's like three cards down. We can bring our Terrapagos back in. We get a Research. So from here, what I'll do is I'll place down the Terrapagos. I'll go Lost Vacuum, get rid of the Nest Ball, get rid of the Stadium, give myself a couple more cards. I'll drop the Water Energy down. I can actually go Area Zero Depth or Under Depth, whatever, to grab myself a Hoot Hoot off the Buddy Poppin. So that way I can go Noctowl, remake myself another Terrapagos on the next turn. I can go Crown Opal here. And require them to need another boss. There's the Power Glass. Cool card. And, like, they can expand their bench if they want, but that doesn't really matter to me at this point in time. I will knock out this Raging Bolt if they bring it in, or if they keep it in. This is going to be another Teal Mask. Oh, no. Another Raging Bolt. There's the Vitality. So I don't think that... They're probably out of Pokemon Catchers, right? Because, like, we can assume they only play two. If they play three, they can go for the other Terrapagos, but then they're going to be stuck again unless they also play a boss. But I feel like if they play a third Pokemon Catcher, they definitely don't play another boss. Okay. So there's the head. They're going to bring up the other Terrapagos.
which again they will be able to knock out but it's gonna cost them a lot to to do and on top of that now I'm pretty confident that they won't be able to like bypass anything else so they'll go down to two prizes we can bring up the Terrapagos. But now what we'll do is we'll knock this out. We'll place this down. We will Jewel Seeker. Grab ourselves Iono. And we'll grab... I really feel like that's about all we need. We're really just here to get the Iono. Because we don't want to play any other two prizers down at this point. Just in the offhand that they do play boss. We can literally just sit here and crown Opal. Take another knockout. We have the boss's orders to knock out the Raging Bolt on the bench. Energy Retrieval for two grass, which will draw them two more cards. But like I said, I think they're, they have to, at this point, let's assume they don't play boss, right? Because they're playing three catcher and a prime catcher, right? Even if they do play one, like, let's say they also play maybe one more boss. They've already used their pal pad. They boss up, let's say like, yeah, there's a vitality. So I think we're fine. I don't think they play like any more, like switching base cards wow I stand corrected they're playing four copies that's crazy I feel like that's really overkill Because they're playing four copies of Prime Catcher. The question is now, like, are they actually playing a boss? And even if they are, they're guaranteed a loss now. Yeah, alright. So they just ran out of options because Crown Opal, like, if we attack with it, there's nothing they can do other than try to get around us. Crazy that they opted for that. Like, I feel like just playing two boss is better. Just for the consistency. To at least have one to have it guaranteed. Because the coin flip there, like, flipping tails twice kind of did cost them the game but that's going to be game number two and i'll see you guys in game number three in a moment peace all right we're in game number three and we're going to be going first our opponent won the coin flip but actually opted for us to go first we do have our fan rotom as well as an ultra ball but obviously ultra ball is not really what we'd want to use to get out our terrapagos but it may be what we have to do Ooh, i like seeing relicanth because it could just mean like Incineroar, but there's also like so many possibilities. So what I'll do here is we'll place the Nocta or the Hoot Hoot down and the Buffalant. I'm going to Ultra Ball away the Grass Energy and the Super Rod. Grab myself my Terrapagos. Place that down. And from here, I'm going to pass my turn. I'm going to see if I can get... Hmm. We'll see what I get off my next turn. Because, in theory, I could place Noctowl down. We've seen Arvin. 
I can place Noctowl, Noctowl down if they, depending on what they play, obviously they're not playing a basic deck because Relicanth would have no use there. We see Hanfin. Are they playing... Wait, hold on. Before I see it, is it going to be like the Magnazone deck? Hey, I called it. That's fun. Alright. If I can knock out the Rotom here, or if I can knock out the Relicanth here, that would actually be really big for me. The question is, how am I going to accomplish that? I can Glass Trumpet. The Grass Energy on. I can Crispin. Oh, I don't even need to. Wait, yes I do. So, I can go Jewel Seeker here. Grab myself Crispin. And grab myself the Bravery Charm. I can attach. Go Crispin. Add a Water and Grass. I can go Grass Energy here. Oh, wait. I was wrong. I needed the water. Oh, wait. It doesn't matter. Because I'm just going to go off the double colorless rather than... And then what I'll do is manually attach... Retreat. Bring this in. I'm 10 damage short. It's tragic. Alright, that's fine though. There's Ultra Ball. I played that really poorly. It was definitely a mistake on my part. There's the Ultra Ball for Bavaro, so I'll definitely get another turn out of this. Super Scoop Up. Hand Fan. Replaces the Relicanth. It will get rid of my Earthen Vessel, but honestly, I don't really care about that that much. Buddy Puffin for another Bidoof. Alright. So, I can knock out the Magnemite. I'm going to lose an energy off of that, but I'm not really too worried about it. I can drop the Research here. Oh, cool. I get the Lost Vacuum, which is pretty nice. I can actually get rid of one Research here. And remove the Hand Fan from play. Just because that's going to be a huge pain. I can place back down the Terrapagos. United beat down. Get rid of the Magmite. And take one prize. Where I do get a Nest Ball. So I can make a new Hoot Hoot. Just to prep the Noctowl. And then after that I'm probably going to end up going Iono here. Get myself a new hand so I don't have to discard the Professor Toros or the Boss's Orders. You see another hand fan. I mean, I can just assume they run four copies. There's one super odd though. So I'm curious to see how many they have. They have to the the weakness to this deck is the fact that Relicanth only matters if they can 
have Magneton to use the Junk Magnet attack. And so if they can't do that, it really doesn't matter what they do. Like, they have no... Like, they have nothing from that point. So what I can actually do here is I'm going to go Nest Ball. Grab myself the... I'm going to grab myself the Hoot Hoot here. And this may actually be a point where I want to keep this. Just because of the fact that I can keep a Terrapagos on the bench that, like, its energies can't be knocked off or, like, messed with. Because their whole goal is that they just want to use, like, Pokemon Catcher over and over and over again. Or not Pokemon Catcher, sorry. They just want to use, like, Crushing Hammer over and over again. And so I can kind of just prevent them from being able to do that. I can put the Buffalant here. I'll go ahead and United Beatdown. I will get an energy moved, which, you know, is annoying. But it's not the biggest deal in the world. If they go Hand Fan again, really what I have to do is just find myself one energy. And then I can boss his orders, the Relicanth, knock that out. There's the Crushing Hammer. So they'll be able to take it off the Terrapagos in the active. This is a situation where Blair's actually going to come in kind of huge. At this point, I just kind of have to dig for a double colorless. Place that down and then boss up the Relicanth. We've seen one super odd use. If they go Magneton here, I would have to knock that out though. Because they're going to go Junk Magnet to pick that back up. I was going to say, if they go de-evolution, that'd be so good for me. Just get to pick back up Noctowl, keep resetting that, that'd be sweet. Yeah, they're just lowering their hand. War Barrel. Let's see what they pick up off the Junk Magnet. Crushing Hammer and an Ultra Ball. We see the research. There's nothing that I really need from these. I'm going to go ahead and place both of these down. And we'll drop the research. I do have to give up the boss here, but I need to find a double colorless, which I am able to find, which is pretty nice. So I'll drop that down into the active. I do have Noctowl, but I can hold on to that for now. I can go Unified Beatdown, knock out the Magneton. Getting rid of that is a pretty big deal, because again, like I said, one of the things that we need to be able to do... I'm going to start manually attaching these energies to the Terrapagos on the bench as well. But if we can get like one more knockout here off any of this stuff... Okay, that's also fine. We can get, like, Blair or something like that later on. The Crushing Hammer is pretty good for us. Even if they flip heads, it doesn't matter because we are protected by Hoot Hoot on the bench. Oh, right. It's special energy. <laughs> Alright. A little annoying. But even still, that's fine, because we can go Noctowl here, grab ourselves a Glass Trumpet, and grab ourselves a Crispin. Actually, I think we, yeah, we only, we already used the only one we have, so we can't do that. 
We do have to get ourselves into a double colorless. Or actually, not really. We can go Noctowl, get ourselves into a switch. We can go and Glass Trumpet. We can go Glass Trumpet, manually attach. Goes Junk Magnet all over again. For Counter Catcher and a Hammer. We do get the double colorless. So I can attach that for turn. We'll drop the Noctowl at this point. We'll use that to grab ourselves. We'll grab the Glass Trumpet. And Blair is in our prize cards. So we'll gla grab the Glass Trumpet and the Prime Catcher. Drop the Glass Trumpet. For one and one. Making sure that we have an option for our following turn. We'll bring in our... We'll bring up the Relicanth. Since that's definitely going to be something that they need anyway if they choose to evolve their Magneton. We'll hold off on the on like dropping the research. Since there's nothing that we really get for doing that anyway. We'll grab one more energy. We get our switch, which is really big. So even if they go, like let's say they drop the crushing hammer here and they are able to hit it. Okay, without Relicanth, it doesn't really matter what they do. But we can also just two hit this. We lose out on a super odd and a nest ball. So like they can go energy crush here, which I mean would definitely be a problem. But we can bring in our new Terrapagos. Do enough damage that we will be in a position where we two shot this. So we'll attach the water energy. And we can even drop the Ursaluna here, just as kind of a backup situation. Like, we'll go Unified Beat down here, do enough damage that it is in two-shot range. Where, even if they knock this out, where, like, they go a second Energy Crush, which also wouldn't KO us now. They have to hit double crushing hammer here. So they fail one. Because they'd have to knock one energy off of this. And one energy off of this. Technically they'd have to hit three. Because they'd have to take both off of this and one off of this. In order for us to be in a situation where we can't KO them. Or they have to drop like an Iono here. And we lose out on the... Okay. I mean, they can re-evolve. They go Heavy Ball. They can re-evolve, but then attacking for the Energy Crush still won't KO us. They go Junk Magnet to get the... Okay. So, that's also fine. We'll go... Switch... Bring the Terrapagos back in. Then what I want to do really quickly is I want to get rid of this and the other Ultra Ball. I'm mainly doing this just so I can search my deck. Is there anything? Okay, so there's a boss's order there. There's also a Tauros. So I'll grab the Pheasant Dippity from my deck. 
And from here, I think I just drop the research. So that way I'm holding the scenario in hand. For the boss, whichever one becomes, like, relevant. I can attach the electric energy here as well. So that way I have an attacker. I'll go research. Alright, and I have boss and Tauros and even an Iono to reset my hand. I can go unified beat down here. Grab one more prize. I mean, the Earthen Vessel doesn't matter, but... Energy, like I said, Energy Crush won't knock us out here. We have a way... I mean, even if they do, it doesn't matter. They'd have to hit multiple... Crushing Hammers. Which I think they only have one. If they counter catcher to boss trap us, we can pick that up with the Toro scenario. There's one. They do need to hit one more. There's another pal pad. Here he doesn't matter. They poke both, or they poke gear for that eerie, looking to hit a switch. Is their goal? But it doesn't matter because we searched out the scenario. Yep. And that's why we wanted to make sure we dug for the scenario and the boss at the same time because it didn't really matter like what they went for there. So that's going to be game number three. Very fun deck. Magnezone is really cool. It's actually fun that I was able to utilize the Hoot Hoot at least slightly. Um, that At the end situation, it would have been great had I kept a Hoot Hoot around. That was kind of a potential misplay from me. Um, not to ha like not to keep one around. Just for the fact that like it does protect my bench bonds from the crushing hammers and things like that. But, you know, it is what it is. That's kind of just the, the nature of the, the game. Sometimes we don't always make all the best decisions we could have. But that's going to be game number three. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to let me know what you want to see in the next video and, like, going forward and stuff like that. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and join the community Discord down in the description below. Um, and, yeah, that's kind of everything. Like I said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.